This channel does not promote the use of legal or illegal substances. This video has been created strictly for entertainment and harm reduction purposes. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today with a different format here. I'm seated in the half lotus position. And why do I do it? If not to talk about magic mushrooms. Yes! Guys, I opened up a second channel. If you haven't checked it out already, please do so. You can click here and I'm gonna link it in the description box. That channel is dedicated only to psychedelic and spiritual topics. However, as I said already, I'm gonna keep the format here on the main channel as well. And let's be honest, it is just a lot of fun to trigger people. Let's be honest guys, every time I do a mushroom video, the haters come out of the bushes, they jump onto the keyboards and they cannot wait to hate on Bobby. Ha! Huh, did the mushroom tell you that? <laughs> yes, of course, it is easy to dismiss something that you have never tried before. Guys, let's be honest, this is why I am such a fan of first-hand practical experience. Studies can go only so far. In this life, it is all about practicality. That being said, if we look into the realm of psychedelics, we will see that we have anecdotal evidence for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The ancient cultures practiced shamanism with ayahuasca and mushrooms and other hallucinogenic plants. So this is something that the ancients have been experimenting with since forever. Now we see the benefits because we've been experiencing it firsthand. The anecdotes are out there and now the science has to catch up with it. And this is why you have organizations such as MAPS that are researching the field of psychedelics to find out about the physiological and psychological benefits of magic mushrooms, of LSD, of ayahuasca, iboga and whatnot. It is a fascinating field and therefore the practical application comes first, the research comes second. There is a phenomena that we observed in the real world and now we will have to figure out what it truly means. That is science. We see something works in this life, in this realm. And from there on, we will have to research it and see what the implications of that mechanisms are. Simple as that. So guys, now I went on to a long rant on why I am so fascinated by psychedelics. Let me dive into the topic of today's video. Today's topic is, yes guys, the magic mushrooms made me eat meat. Whoa. Yes, it is true. Many of you asked me, Bobby, didn't you say that the magic mushroom told you to eat eggs? Why didn't you go vegetarian? Why do you start eating meat? Why do you start gorging on the flesh? That's not what the mushroom meant. So first and foremost, guys, you can't know what the mushroom meant because you haven't been in that experience. For people that never had a psychedelic experience, let me give you a little bit of explanation here. It truly does not matter if the experience is real, quote unquote, or not. The experience will be real to you. You will experience it as if it is real. I personally, if you ask me personally, I will say that I tend to believe that it is real indeed. I tend to believe that there is much, much more than the physical realm. Yes, I tend to believe that there is a creator. Yes, I tend to believe that there are spirits. I do. But do I know that for sure? No, I don't. I really don't. All we can do in this life is believe in something. That's what it is. Even if you do believe in science, you still believe in it. There are certain factors that will point you into a certain direction. That's all. And now it comes down to you to 
to figure out what works for you. I always like to take the example of martial arts. If you look at martial arts, a holistic approach would obviously be MMA. And therefore, you could say, MMA is the way to go, it's the best. Don't even try anything else. But let's be honest, for the individual, Jiu-Jitsu could be the way. Or it could be boxing. Or it could be karate. It could be any of those things. In the end, it will come down to what will help the individual to build up discipline, to build up athleticism, to build up a strong persona and to be able to defend yourself. So again, of course, the optimal, the ideal might be MMA. But in the end, it comes down to what is practicable for you. So therefore, if you are a research scientist and you want to spend your time in the lab, that is fantastic. But there is of course the other route of psychedelics. I personally love both sides, but firsthand I do experience psychedelics. Of course, because I do not spend my time in the laboratory. I studied pharmaceutical chemistry for around about one and a half years. And I gave it up. I gave it up and I started to travel the world. I couldn't be confined. I got depressed sitting in the laboratory. I want to experience life. I left the lab and I went to Australia, later to South America, where I drank ayahuasca with the shamans. So therefore guys, I was always about the practicality of things. I couldn't waste my life just researching things on a very one-dimensional level. But I salute everybody that can. I really have the biggest respect for researchers, so on and so forth. But again, I am drifting off today. I have all kinds of thoughts. You have to excuse me. Guys, today we are talking about a specific mushroom experience that made me eat meat. I was already experimenting with eggs and I did feel better. I did feel better, but there was still something missing. And even though I broke the chains of veganism, so to speak, and I progressed into eating animal foods, I still couldn't make myself eat flesh. I just simply couldn't. It was still such a humongous barrier. I mean, let's be honest, ancient religions, in Hinduism, for example, you had people that practiced vegetarianism for millennia. So therefore you can see how strong this belief system can be. Religions have been formed out of it. And I was there as well. I was in that dogmatic belief system and I believed that I cannot allow myself to eat flesh. Honestly, I wanted to return to veganism. That was my biggest wish. And I know that all the vegans want to shit on me. And hey, you can. I mean, it's pretty easy to write a hateful comment. Go for it. If that makes you feel better, I'm truly happy for you. But the point of the story is, if you can really listen, you will find out that I really meant good. That I really was invested in veganism. For what it's worth. I do not really care. Point of the story is, I couldn't let go of veganism. And then I had another mushroom experience in Koh Phangan, Thailand. And I asked the gods again, what to do? It wasn't directed towards nutrition at first. I had a pretty dark trip. I was sucked into the void. I was seeing demons, wolves, geometric pattern that seemed very, very dark. But then when I came out of that darkness, out of a sudden I reached a state of total bliss and total clarity absolute acceptance of the moment and the presence that I couldn't compare to anything else that I prior experienced, at least not in the last years. And I felt so sharp, so crystal clear. And most importantly, I felt thankful, really thankful that I had the capacity to feel so clear. I totally forgot how it feels to be in that present state. Even though I was meditating, even though I was practicing mindfulness, still I didn't experience this clarity. I always had brain fog and depression. So I was sitting there pretty dumbstruck, wondering why I feel so clear. Again, on that note, I know that you will say, that is because you were tripping balls. Of course, you felt clear because it was drug induced. I understand that. I get it. Yes, if I would listen to the story, I would probably think the same. But try to keep an open mind for a minute or two, and maybe you will understand where I'm coming from. 
In that crystal clear state, out of a sudden, I heard a voice, a familiar voice. It was the voice of the mushroom. <laughs> yes, I know I'm triggering people already. That voice told me that this clarity is something beautiful and that this clarity is something that is my birthright. But I was denying it and I could feel like that if I would do one thing. And you already know the answer. That one thing was to eat flesh. Again, if you haven't watched my mushroom egg video, you can click here. In that mushroom experience, I was denying it as well. And I was fighting that message too. I didn't want to eat eggs. And the same happened again. That vegan mind state is not something that you lose overnight, guys. I was fighting it. I was resisting it. I was trying to bargain with the mushroom again. But I soon realized that there was no option to bargain this. It was the core message of that psychedelic experience. And in the end, it was up to me to face that decision. If I will choose to stay in that confused state or if I will choose to go further and to break the chains of veganism, to reclaim my health. So guys, try to look at it objectively. Try to look at it even as rational as possible. And try to think of it not as some sort of magical experience, but just a psychological mind game, right? An experiment that you conduct in your own mind, in your own consciousness. Okay, let it be so. And let it be so that I'm gonna play devil's advocate to myself. Let it be so that I subconsciously had those thoughts of eating meat. Could be, right? But the status was that I had tremendous brain fog, that I had tremendous depression, that I clearly couldn't figure out my health within the realm of the plant-based diet. And hence, through that psychedelic experience, I opened my eyes to the option of reintroducing certain foods that I totally eliminated from my menu, right? And now look at people such as Jordan Peterson that are not into psychedelics. All they did is on a conscious level to dismiss all the plant foods and to reintroduce only animal-based meals. And it worked tremendously for them. So therefore, I'm not here to tell you that it is the gods, the mushrooms speaking to me. No, I'm telling you about the valuable lesson of that psychedelic experience. This is how I found out how to listen to my own body. Honestly, I always say, if I would listen to my mind, I would still be vegan. Because there are many rational facts to be a vegan, right? Sure, if you read certain research papers, if you listen to certain people, you could make an almost rational decision and say, actually veganism is the way to go. But all of that doesn't matter if you do not feel right. And this is why I am here for. This is what I am sharing. You can dismiss it as anecdotes. You can dismiss it as bro signs. You can say whatever you want to say. In the end, I am truly happy. And that is really what counts. Guys, I am exploring what is going on in the food industry. I was in France on a dairy farm. I will go to Australia and visit so many plant productions and whatnot. And right now I'm in Macedonia and I confront where my food is coming from. I said it already. The next step is to hunt and slaughter myself. I always had that thirst. I always had that desire. I always had that need to see everything for myself. If you want to be a keyboard warrior and you want to spend your time on Google researching certain things, hey, then so be it. If that is truly what makes you happy, and I wonder how that can be, but okay man, more power to you. If you want to be a fruitarian, despite all the anecdotal and the scientific evidence, and you want to chill on a lonely island, more power to you. There are certain factors that we cannot take into account. The psychology plays a major role. It is not all in the physical. It truly is not. 
the mind is still a metaphysical concept. We cannot pinpoint where certain desires originate from. If we all would be super rational, we all would just have sex in the missionary position. It is what it is. We all have certain desires and predispositions that we will have to research on our own bodies to understand who we truly are. Because it truly does not matter what I say, what anybody else says on YouTube. We all will only achieve personal happiness once we start listening to ourselves. If nothing else, that is the takeaway point of this video. It is not about me taking mushrooms on an island in Thailand and then realizing that I have to eat meat. That is my personal story. Take it or leave it. Listen to it for entertainment purposes or listen to it and start hating on me if that makes you feel better. In the end, we all have to make the decision and see what makes us great, what makes us feel good, what makes us perform in the best way possible. I couldn't care less if somebody on the internet tells me, hey, look at that vegan bodybuilder. Look at that vegan bodybuilder. He has clearly more muscle than you. Yeah, that is great. If veganism works for that guy, hey, then more power to him. I know that all of the vegan bodybuilders shit at least three to four times per day. If that is the life that you want to live, then go for it. I'm not here to stand in your way. The only thing that I am against is ideology and dogmatic belief systems that are being pushed upon us. I know that the vegans will always say that as long as your food choice is affecting another being, it is not a personal choice any longer. And I understand that standpoint. But in the end, you will have to understand that when we are talking about food, we are talking about an ancient practice that goes beyond culture. It goes beyond conditioning. It comes from our core. It comes from our nature. It is what we truly are. And you can see it on every level that we as humans do perform the best if we eat our species-specific diet. What the species-specific diet is in detail for you personally, that is a different story. But we all have to agree upon that a certain amount of animal foods will be needed. It is what it is. That is pretty much undeniable. But yet again, if you want to fast your body and you want to rely on supplementation, hey, then so be it. I'm not your enemy. Do whatever you want to do, as long as you're not imposing your belief systems onto us. And a belief system is something that only a human can hold. This is obviously transcending the animal realm. So please don't give me that spiel that my belief system is affecting another. Yes, it is affecting another, as everything else in this ecosystem, but it is not affecting another human being. We are the only beings that can form social contracts. It is what it is. The animals are excluded out of that human realm. Animals do not point the camera at them. They're not holding mics in their hand. They're not ranting and raving here for ages. We have to come to acceptance. But yet again, back to topic, eating meat through psychedelics. Yes, that is truly what happened. It was not an egoistical choice. You guys asked me, here is the answer. I truly had another mushroom experience after that egg. And I haven't talked about it since. But it is about time for you to understand that yes, even the psychedelic experience, and I know that is hard to understand for certain spiritual practitioners. Yes, even in the psychedelic realm, you can get messages of eating meat. Absolutely. This is what happened to me. This is what I followed. Every time I base my decision on a psychedelic experience, I reaped the benefits. Listen, I'm a pretty pragmatic, rational guy. Before I ever did psychedelics, I thought they're just drugs, they're bullshit, mumbo jumbo, woo woo, leave that to the bushman. That was my opinion. I was severely sick. And I'm not gonna go into the whole topic again because that would lead to a two hour video. But the point of the story is that I healed a physical illness with mushrooms. Since then, I applied those mushrooms medicinally and they always helped me out, no matter if it was spiritually, physically or mentally. And even beyond, general lifestyle questions have been answered by the psychedelic experience. 
Maybe you could reach the same through meditating in the forest, going for a hike, whatever it takes for you. For me personally, it always worked. And that particular mushroom experience showed me that the only way for me to be in a crystal clear state would be to reintroduce the flesh. And so I did. And the effects were immediate. Honestly, after a couple of days, I felt rejuvenated. Guys, I told you all about it. I don't want to sound like a broken record. But the brain fog was gone. The depression was lifted. Just overall, the sense of well-being. I felt like I was catapulted back into that psychedelic experience. And I felt great again. That is all the evidence that I need for my body. I really couldn't care less what anybody else will say. And I always have the freedom, of course, because this channel is called Bobby's Perspective. I am doing me. That is all I can do. I will never pretend to be something that I am not. I am Bobby. And I am expressing myself truthfully here. Hate it or love it, man. That is it. Maybe you will take something out of it. Maybe you will learn something. Maybe you will learn nothing. Maybe you will just use this to post a hateful comment. And that is great as well. Anyways, guys. I'm going to cut it off here. This was a very, very long video. Something different. Let me know in the comments what you think about this format. Where I'm just sitting here ranting again about different topics. Not very focused only on one subject matter. But this way I believe you can get a more holistic experience. And you can understand more who I am and where I am coming from. Alright guys. And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And as always guys. Much love and peace.